everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I plan to launch a Dres station and this time instead of using the same format we have been using so far with the Val station, Jewel station, etc. I have decided that we are going to have a drilling unit down here. The drill drilling unit will have the two nerve engines that we had on the previous stations but it will carry those down with it. As you can see, it'll uh, undock and then redock. But I have to do some adjustments to this because I forgot to put RCS. And maybe we want some in independent propellant on the on the station and part itself, the part that remains in orbit around Drez. We've got a big dish here. And for the first time ever, I think, I am putting boosters on boosters. You can see these Apollox SRBs are actually attached uh, t temporarily uh, to these Rockamax Jumbo 64 fuel tanks with the Bobcat engines at the bottom. And that's because we're not using the shuttle mice on this. Uh, these tanks are actually drained of oxidizers, so it's all liquid fuel down the center. Uh, but we have the room for oxidizer in case something that docks to it needs it. And of course we have the drilling unit. Uh, we probably should have more ore capacity, but I, I'll just do that on an expansion. We already changing things as it is. So that is the idea, but I have some tweaking to do here and I also have to pick up the contract. So I have not done that and we also need a time warp to the window. Let's take a look at the contract. It should be the same as all the other contracts. I decided that we, uh, if there's any planet that we would like drilling and all that business around. Oh, speaking of which I need to put the antenna on. Uh, not the antenna, the scanner, because we haven't scanned res for resources, so got a to-do list. But we do have the typical space station contract, all the normal requirements, so the stuff we have on top should fulfill those. We've got the science lab, the cupola, etc. So we are picking that up. And yeah, I decided that Dres would be a good place to have refueling, because it is it has some interesting Delta V requirements to get to it and away from it, so... It's very inconvenient, so if we're going to build up every planet in the system, this might be the first place to test out a drilling unit. And I do believe that our two nerves have enough uh, thrust to get off of Drez. I think we have some margin on that. So anyway, and of course there's the benefit that they only use liquid fuel, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, of course we do have uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer in these tanks to power the fuel cells, because and we do have the solar panels just in case, but we might need fuel cells as well. So anyway, let me make the changes that I know I need to make. We do have a little lander can here for an engineer if we should want to send an engineer to improve efficiency, but it also has a control core uh, tucked right there. So that is all there. Okay, so yeah, let me make the changes, time warp to the window, and we'll get this going. So we're at the Dress transfer window. I didn't have to do too much time warping for that, but I decided to check if there were any other Drez contracts, of course, and uh, oddly enough, well, there are none, but uh, there is another Paul contract. You'd think we would have explored Paul enough already, but they have transfer any crew between vessels near Paul. I'll just, uh, I'll just pick it up then. <laughs> There's a Val ice chunk. I think we can do that too. So, I mean, of course, as usual, a lot of the action will be happening around the dual system and we'll continue to expand on that sort of thing. I don't know about Daffel's base on the moon. It's not that interesting. Uh, so, yeah, we do have plenty of active contracts and uh, one, two, three. Oh, the dual station still needs to be tugged into the right position. Five, six. So we'll have plenty to do at Jewel for the next transfer window, but let's focus on Drez, and for that we just have to get this done. But we will test our lander and see if that works. Okay, it's a hefty and rather Kerbal looking rocket this time. Uh, I hope I've thought of things. There's probably not that much battery power on the lander. Just what the Mark 1 lander can has, I think. So that might be a huge flaw. Oh well, anyway, let's just get on with it. We'll see. Maybe we'll have a Kerbal do an EVA placement of batteries or something. We should use that functionality more often. Anyway, so this is... It is what it is. Yep, a very Kerbal rocket indeed. Throttle up, SAS on, and launch. Well, it's going up. 
So, yeah, I've locked the fuel in the little lander, so it has tons of delta V. We could probably use some of it if we need to, and it'd still be able to make the landing and drilling and all that. I added the scanner on. Obviously, we have to get into a polar orbit with the station. Of course, there was a choice of whether I wanted to put the converter on the station and leave it there or bring it down with the lander. I decided to go with bring it down with the lander and not just haul the ore all up to the station. But I, I didn't do any sort of calculation to see which would be optimal. I'm sure people do know. Okay, booster step. Well, solid booster step. We should have enough to make orbit. Whoa, they're going all over the place, aren't they? Um, with the remaining Bobcat boosters. Plenty of margin, just the, these were not able to get off the ground. We could have dumped the fuel, but then, then we wouldn't have enough Delta V, so... We're still sort of deep in the atmosphere. Well, not that deep, but we're still in the atmosphere for sure. I'll give us a little bit more apoapsis, but I do want to dispose of these in the atmosphere. We could have done a better trajectory, but it's probably not going to be critical. We've got spare fuel here. Actually, you know what? We can just pump that in. Well, there's not any space, spare space for liquid fuel, so I guess there's no point. Yeah, we'll just let go of them at a height. Uh, we, we might need a little bit more of a boost up because the drag is still here. Let me get rid of the fairings. All right. Okay, we should be facing minimal extra drag. Let's give ourselves just a little bit more boost with these. And then separate them off. Oop. Oh, wow. Bonus explosions with those. Alright, well, they're disposed of. <laughs> okay, make sure there's fuel flow through all this. That's got crossfeed, and that's fine. That's got crossfeed. Okay, activating the nerves. You can see we have 3,775 meters per second with this tank locked here. Uh, hopefully, it fully understands the import of that. Anyway, yes. So that's all locked, and then we'll extend the solar panels. The main dish is up there already. One reason I had to put the boosters on the boosters is because of the drilling units. They poke out, and we couldn't really... I mean, I probably could have fit the boosters on, but it'd be close, so... I decided just to go with the boosters on boosters thing. So, Drez is out there. It should be like 82 degrees, but I went with the alarm. So, it's a little bit less than that right now. Uh, sorry, more than that, the angle. Hopefully it'll be okay. There's always an inclination thing with Drez. Unless we're at exactly the right time. It's a thousand five hundred-ish to go out to it. Yeah, and then once we get there, we have to capture, and Drez doesn't help much with that. Okay, well, we have an encounter, finally, but it's an awkward sort of approach. So we might be going too fast to capture safely with our Delta V. Uh, we're doing a sort of combination thing, 1,648 meters per second initially. And then the second maneuver, we've got another combination thing, and that's 643. So that's already, that leaves us with about 1,500 left. And in my experience, it does take quite a lot to capture around Drez. Let me try and get this a little bit closer. And we'll need to be a certain height. Um, the station, uh, awkwardly, the station has to be in a lower height then we would scan at. So we have to get into a scanning orbit first and then the station height. But okay, how much is that? 1,800. All right, well, what if we unlock the lander's fuel? Here we go. Um, 6,101. Well, okay, so that would give us enough, uh, even though that's 1,800 to capture and all we need to do is land in a spot with ore and then that's fine so we need to reserve enough for that landing and I think it'll be okay but 
Let's find out. Gotta start to burn in. That's another thing. We've got a long burn time. We're gonna have to probably do this in in batches. I just realized that we're going down and I never made orbit. That's not good. Prograde, please. Prograde. Uh, get those in. Get those in. Gosh, thinking about how to transfer and I didn't even make orbit yet. We're apparently in the throes of the atmosphere. Uh-oh. Uh... I have been negligent. I... What can I say? I blame Christmas. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna save this. Dang it! It should have blown up by now. This is taking too long. I think we overbuilt this particular station, by the way. Yeah, it, it, it all survived. I don't think anything has actually... Uh, since uh, stage separation, nothing has actually broken off. <laughs> Maybe we'll be able to recover something. Who knows? Let's see. On impact of the ground. Or water. Okay, well, that's pretty fast. No, I got rid of everything. Okay, we'll try that again this time. Uh, maybe we need to put a little bit more liquid fuel, or maybe I should put a little bit more thrust on the stage, because the burn time was really high. So I might reconfigure a little bit. Okay, so the preceding part of this video was recorded on Christmas Eve, and I guess I was a bit distracted. So I have waited until after Christmas to continue, and I have beefed up our Dres Station launch. So now, hopefully, I am in a clear frame of mind for this launch and will not fail to make orbit. And I have added two cheetahs to the core and the tank that used to have, or the tanks that used to have no oxidizer and only liquid fuel now have the oxidizer to feed the cheetahs. And I added an extra liquid fuel tank for the nuclear engines so that we don't have a deficit of Delta V because of course the cheetahs are not as efficient as the nerves, so. Yep, and in order to accommodate all the extra mass, we have added two extra boosters. Well, uh, sorry, four extra boosters, uh, one on each of the other boosters. So, yep, it is a beefy launch. I am doing very Kerbal things. Uh, let's hope that everything works this time. And of course, now we'll have more thrust for the initial transfer, so I don't have to worry as much about that. Okay, that is all the delta v's for vacuum and at sea level we let's double check that we get off the ground yes we do with a lot of vigor so maybe too much vigor do we want to thrust limit it though i don't know if it's more efficient to keep them hanging around uh we'll just go with vigor all right let's go again okay and there's no telling what's going to happen at dres as far as whether everything will work out or not but at least we should be able to fulfill the Dres Space Station contract, so we'll see how the lander situation works. Anyway, throttle up, SAS is on, and launch. Okay. Lots of thrust weight ratio, like I said. Not a whole lot of gimbling engine. I mean, of course, the Bobcats are gimbling, but we've got all this thrust from the SRBs, so we better watch it. Okay, we should be well past the speed of sound. Okay, solid booster set. Okay, well, they are off safely. We do have a surplus still. We could have carried even more fuel. Okay. We will still deorbit the boosters. And that should be fine. Separation of the boosters. And they disintegrate. <laughs> okay. And let's get rid of the fairing. And let's activate the cheetahs. Okay, and making orbit. For sure. 
But we know the transfer isn't going to be anything easy. At least we'll have more thrust weight ratio here. I'll need a Kerbal to remove those Cheetah engines around Drez though. Maybe we can get those off and stow them so the Ladner doesn't have to carry them down every time. That's the downside to the arrangement, of course. Uh, this lander fuel is still locked, by the way. It should have enough Delta V to land with them and take off with them. It's just inconvenient. And, of course, it would reduce the amount of liquid fuel we could deliver to the station. Okay, I think it looks like the time for transfer is a little bit later than what we have here, which I sort of expected. The alarm that it had built in gave us this sort of angle between Kerbin and Drez, but I know that it's supposed to be 82 degrees, and so, but I thought that maybe because of the inclination difference, there might be some variation in that, but it seems like 82 degrees is a better estimate than what the alarm gave. I don't know what the built-in alarm system uses to uh, do its, um, whatchamacallit, planetary transfer windows here, but it seems mostly wrong. <laughs> it, it really seems mostly wrong. I don't know what they're doing with that. So, yeah, we're a little bit early, and I'm going to add a whole bunch of uh, wait time. Okay, well, I've got a really close, closest approach. The problem is that no matter how I manipulate the nodes right now, yeah, we actually had an encounter, but when I started manipulating the nodes, no matter what I did, increase the number. I'm going down on this one, going up on that one, going down here, going up there, going up here, going down there. That's uh, I, every every option uh, increases the number. <laughs> and this delta V is ticking down even when I'm not manipulating the maneuver. See, the thing is, we've got the burn in nine days, and so it's it's probably got some weird... We're, our orbit's not changing, so we not we do not have phantom forces. It's just unable to calculate that properly uh, nine days from now. So I think I'll go to tracking station time warp, and then we'll see what we have. Maybe our close encounter will be completely wiped out, I don't know. Now these 9 days, mind you, are 24 hour days, so 36 days normal Kerbal time. Okay, now when I manipulate this radial one that's going down, which is good, it's a good start. Now, and sometimes when I switch nodes to manipulate it, it automatically bakes in maneuver 1 into maneuver 2, or maneuver 2 into maneuver 1. Have to zero it out, but fortunately, since I kept bo uh, both of them discrete, in other words, only doing two directions on maneuver one and one on maneuver two, I can just zero it out and it's fine. But if they were mixed maneuvers, that would be more painful. Oh, that'll be close enough. We'll probably not be that accurate anyway. All right, so we have our plan. Let's see what works. Even though it'll probably not be great for Delta V, I'll activate the nerves as well and we'll use all the engines. Uh, that point still looks very radial. Maybe we should do it half and half. But, well, that certainly would bust our meticulous plotting. But this way we're gonna probably end up in the atmosphere. Let's see. Let's see though. Want to go into the atmosphere again. Okay, go. Okay, yeah, that's as close to the atmosphere as I'm gonna risk it. I'll go prograde here. Okay, we have passed the node. We have passed periapsis. We gotta turn off the nuclear engines. Let me just shut down briefly. And do the rest with the cheetahs. As you notice, uh, it's just enough. Assuming that this node is still correct after what we've just done. Now allow us to deplete the oxidizer. Now well, if we were to believe that node, uh, we're falling short here with this stage now. 
activate the nuclear engines. And we have 2,700 meters per second with this fuel in the lander still locked. Wait, our apoapsis is... Oh, oh, I misread that. Actually, we had the right amount. I think, uh, yeah, um, we've gone beyond our apoapsis. Because of the angle I was looking at this, it looked lower, but we were actually already higher. Okay, so the cheetahs did exactly what the cheetahs were supposed to do. We've overburned a little bit. Let's see if we can adjust this maneuver for that. It'll take 1,600 to capture. We have it. We've got 2,700. So, yeah, we can do this, and we will do this. This is what we are going to do. So, out to the make course adjustment. Okay, and go. Well, that'll be below 25 kilometers. Is that safe? Uh, we'll see. Okay, we are in Drez SOI. We don't have any science contracts, nor do we have any science instruments on this right now. Something else will have to bring those. Uh, we are headed to periapsis, but we need to think about... Well, it's four hours to periapsis, so we don't need to rush on the burn. We do need to do a burn of about maybe 10 minutes, though. Maybe more than that. Okay, go. 13 minute burn time. We have to watch that periapsis to make sure it doesn't get too high or too low. Seems like our burn has not ended up centered on periapsis though as we're still going down but we've passed the maneuver node. So, I'll wait. Because I think it's gone off a bit. How far are we above the surface? Well, it's not that high, at least. Okay, we've captured. It's sort of in an inconvenient, lopsided way. So, we'll wait until periapsis again to bring that down. Maybe we should boost it up, do the scanning, and then bring it down. I think that'll be better. Let's see, what altitude does it require? Ah, 25 is okay. So, we just need to be just above what the station contract requires. Alright, so then that'll be fine. Okay, we've, we're have we doing it. 60 science added. And we should have... Well, let's see, ore. It better be ore around here. It says 1.5. Maybe I'm not... I don't have the thing displayed. Let me see. I'll go overlay. There's... Not seeing anything. Now, if we set the cutoff at zero, it should show everything. But I'm not seeing anything. Oh wait, there's a little... there's a little patch here. And it goes away when I set the cutoff to 10. There's, there's little very fady patches. This is horrible. You can see a little patch there. Hmm. That doesn't instill me with much confidence that we're getting a lot of ore here. But I guess maybe a little bit is better than nothing? Not sure. Okay, well that's a problem, but all right, let's uh, bring our orbit back down so that we fulfill the station contract viz. If there's any place that could do with really high concentrations of ore, it'd be Drez, but nope. Okay, that should do it for the contract. It does. It's checkmarked that off. So, okay, we've got the money. <laughs> but... We uh, may not have any ore to work with, or much ore to work with. It's a green pad. Maybe a different color would be better. Well, that's a little bit brighter, okay. Now we've got, let's see, we could land in this spot. Just for a test, I mean. Uh, it's rotating a little bit faster. Maybe, maybe this spot will be better. 
Okay, well, this is in an orbit. We are going to deploy the lander. The lander doesn't have a big antenna, so it has to communicate with this. We don't have any Kerbal yet, so it's a Kerbalus drilling unit with the limitations of efficiency that that entails. Tons of Delta V right now. So even if we can't get ore down there, we probably can get back up here. We definitely can get back up here. Sure we're not going to hit anything? We are not. Okay, let's burn into a descent orbit. We have an unfinished rover there. Stage time on this is still 13 minutes and 34 seconds, so it's a bit rough. We don't need even a high fraction of that to land, though. Well, we're definitely hitting a greenish patch. Guess anywhere around here will do. Looks like we can manage a safe landing until we actually reach the surface, in which case I have no idea about the slope. It's hard to gauge it with everything so rugged. Once we have a sense of how much liquid fuel we actually need for landing, we can just put the remainder into the station. We're carrying all this fuel and we can see what we needed. That'll give us plenty of margin. There's definitely a slope here. No, more slope than I thought, okay. <laughs> that was the... I tell you, it's hard to tell sometimes. Oh no, uh, okay, 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 stop, stop. That's a lot of slope. Okay. All right, all right, but it's not sliding. Okay, and it's auto-saving. All right, um, deploy drill, I guess. Let's get the radiators out. It is sliding a little bit. <laughs> it's worrisome. Hope, hoping that the drill would provide some drag here or friction. Okay, it is starting to harvest. It's just a little bit. There's a rock there. It's a little bit off. Okay, well, electric charge is balanced without running the fuel cells. Um, and we have no comms. Okay, we're gonna have to wait for comms again. We are now converting to liquid fuel and oxidizer. So, um, right now the solar panels are fine. Now I'll start the fuel cell just in case. Wait a minute. Stop fuel cell? Okay, well it is taking electric charge it looks like now. Alright. Well, we can drill for ore around here. Okay, we'll wait until past the nighttime side. So let's see how it holds up during nighttime. On fuel cell fuel. Seems okay. Oh, and we need to switch to just liquid fuel only. Ooh, the radiators, though. Okay, we have communication. I think we'll just go back up to the station right now to make a full run of it. Even though we haven't topped off our liquid fuel. This does not seem like a bad thing. We also didn't top off the mod propellant, but I think that'll be alright, too. Okay, so that's all good. Radiators are red, but not well. They're the cooling percentage is increasing, so it's not great. Let's stop the LFO now. It's still increasing. Uh, we'll keep an eye out for that. All right, we're basically under the station's orbit, so it's an optimal time to head back up. We just need to head south. Okay, here we go. Radiators aren't gonna be any happier when we're running the nuclear engines. Okay, we're overshooting a bit on the top side, but we have an encounter and we are in render range over there. Not the most efficient rendezvous ever, but it'll be quick. We might want to set the station above 30 kilometers. Okay, we need to match orbits with it quickly. 
Okay, well, we are on the correct side for docking. So let's just kill velocity and target the docking port. Well, all we really need to do is make sure our solar panels are parallel as far as rotation is concerned. Yeah, it wants to wiggle the other way. It's not that. Yeah, it keeps trying to throw me off. I turn to align it and then it turns back the other way. Well, whatever. All right. Actually, uh, in this version, there is the docking rotation alignment angle thing. It looks like I completely forgot about that, but we do have rotation locked in zero degrees, I guess. I don't know. I've, I haven't actually played around with that to figure out how to use it. So maybe we, I didn't have to worry so much. But yep. Okay, we've done a full round with this. We really only need about 500 units of liquid fuel to land, and that was with the rest of the liquid fuel present. So I'll try and keep that in mind. And this lander seems okay for anything Dres gravity or below. Of course, maybe we don't need to carry that heavy a tank in the future. That was just to make it look good with the rest of the station. So anyway, we'll think about this. But I'll wrap it up here. We have done the contract duty, and we now have a station around Drez. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.